I have loved shooting all kinds of macro photography projects right from the comfort of my own home. And these ones are my favorite ones that you can try. Whether it's cold and wet outside, you're maybe not feeling very well, or you're just feeling plain lazy, there are some times when you'd just rather not go outside. But that doesn't mean you can't still make use of your camera. I've shot all kinds of photography projects right at home and I have absolutely loved the results. It's so easy to let the darker months sap away our creativity and mean that we end up leaving our cameras on our shelves gathering dust. But I've found that these projects really keep that creativity flowing and help keep me energized to want to pick my camera up and take more photos. And the best part is they all just use standard equipment. So as long as you've got a macro lens and a light and a spare corner of your room, you're pretty much all set. So let's dive in. Oil on Water is one of my favorite macro projects to try because I absolutely love the varied results. I've got everything from busy, vibrant shots full of colors and swirling patterns through to extremely minimalist monochrome shots that wouldn't look out of place printed and framed in some fancy hotel lobby. The setup is pretty simple. You need a receptacle of water, in my case just a measuring jug, and it's got to have a see-through base. Below that goes sheets of colored paper or colored clothing or magazines or posters, pretty much anything with some color in it. It doesn't matter about text or the fact that it's got photos on it or anything like that because it's going to be completely out of focus. So the more you experiment with different things, the more different results you're going to get. You then put a couple of glugs of oil into the water. I often use olive oil and you'll have a stick or straw ready to swirl it around. Your camera will be shooting top down, focusing on the oil on top of the water and therefore seeing just a blurry background of whatever colored paper you're using. You may need to add some light either in a flash or LED, although I have known people do this just using natural light from a window. This one is really great to spend a weekend playing with because every shot you take is going to be different. You can try all kinds of different combinations of colors from vibrant backgrounds through to more minimalist monochrome ones. You'll try different oils, try different amounts of oil, different amounts of swirling to see what you can get. No two images will be the same and the more you try, the more you'll come away with. Take a leaf, stand it upright in a clamp or maybe sellotape it to a bottle and get your macro lens as close up as you can. Old leaves are great for having all kinds of amazing textures in them as they start to decay, while fresh leaves can often be great for backlighting as it really highlights all of those veins running through them. Different leaves will of course give you different results, so head out and forage for some inspiration or maybe head to a florist or a garden center to find some leaves that you think will work. And while you're at the florist, check out their actual flowers too. Flowers are always amazing subjects for macro photography, and as they're so easily just bought locally, then they are great opportunities for getting in some practice. I loved finding the velvety leaves of this red flower. I spritzed the petals with water so it all beaded up, used an LED light in a softbox, and then focus stacked the result to make sure it was pin sharp. We all have phones, speakers, headphones, drinks, whatever, around our house that we can take photos of. I take a lot of product photos professionally, so I know that there is a huge crossover in the skills that you use for product photography and the skills that you use for macro photography. Lighting, close-up focusing, focus stacking, post-production, it's all pretty much the same, just with different subjects. So maybe you've just got a nice new set of headphones for Christmas, or you've got a new phone, or you've got a new PlayStation, you can photograph the controller. It doesn't really matter as you'll still be learning a ton about how to take product photos. And hey, you may even find that you love the process and the creativity involved, and you actually might start being able to make some money from macro. 
Like the oil on water photos, I love this bubble photography because every single image offers something completely different. With some shots, I had the camera slightly further away, capturing the whole bubble looking almost like a planet. Then with others, I got right up close, filling the frame with these incredible, vibrant, swirling colors. They have such an incredible psychedelic look to them, and to be honest, I don't think you'd really imagine that they're simply just photos of a bubble. And before I did them, I had no idea that that is what the surface of a bubble looks like. And the setup is pretty straightforward. Get a dish or a cup or something to fill up with your soapy water. I added a dash of cooking oil to help with the swirls and a little bit of vegetable glycerin, which just helps thicken the mixture a little bit and helps the bubbles hang around longer. You'll need a light overhead and for this, bigger is better. So if you don't have a really big wide softbox, you can always just try hanging a sheet overhead over the top of your bubble and firing your light directly into it. Then you simply use a drinking straw to create a large bubble, get your focus and start firing away. These shots tend to need a little bit of editing work to bring the best out of them, but that is a pretty simple process because it really just involves being quite heavy handed with the contrast, the clarity and the saturation. Water droplet photography can be quite difficult to do, but the results can also be stunning when you get it right. So this is one that's maybe best saved when you've got a whole weekend ahead of you with no plans so you can treat yourself to a really indulgent project. There are a number of different techniques that you can use to take these shots, as well as various pieces of specialist equipment designed solely for taking these sorts of shots. But the fundamentals pretty much remain the same, and I took mine without using any extra equipment. I went the manual way. I used a tray of water filled quite high to the rim so that when I angled my camera low onto the surface of the water, the rim of the tray was barely visible. I used two flashes, one firing at my background that would be reflected in the surface of the water and another one angled to fire directly at the point where the splash would be. I played around with my settings quite a lot for this shot, but I had the best success when I actually used a long exposure of several seconds using a pipette to drop the droplets of water into the tray and then manually firing my flash to freeze the motion. That fast burst of light from the flash meant that all of that motion was frozen perfectly pin sharp, despite the fact that it was a slow shutter speed. It was very hit and miss though, and I took thousands of images over that weekend, and only a few of them were ones that I felt were actually successful. That said, while the goal was to get a shot like this, where the two droplets collide to create this crown effect, I love the simplicity of these other shots, where there's just this red orb over the blue water. I think there's something very calming and ethereal about them, and I really like them as a result. Pet owners among you will almost certainly already have a camera roll full of photos of your furry friend. I have taken thousands of photos of my cat to lose, but it was only quite recently that I actually decided to get him into studio with some proper lighting. I ripped a hole in a paper background, sat Toulouse behind it, and set up a light in front. With my camera on a tripod, I coaxed Toulouse through using toys and treats to get him to poke his paws or face through the hole. I then tried a few different edits, but I absolutely loved the dark brooding look I got by desaturating the background paper and letting his vibrant orange fur stand out. Now the shots I got are not macro photography, but it's still a really great project that you can try at home. And if you're specifically wanting to make it macro, then you can just get closer up on the nose or the paws. Who says you shouldn't play with fire? Well, my mum did, but clearly I wasn't listening very well because I have had some great success taking photos with fire using matches and coffee beans. It can give some dramatic results, and it's actually quite a tricky process taking the photos, so it can be a great learning experience. Getting the shot requires balancing your settings perfectly, making sure you've got the right amount of ambient light dialed into your camera to capture the flame itself, but then bringing in enough of your own light to light up whatever it is that's on fire. The match shot was an easy setup involving blending multiple shots, including the smoke that came once the match was blown out. While the coffee bean required lighter fluid and compositing shots of the bean, both before and during the burning process. So it's also great for learning about more advanced Photoshop techniques. 
it is a really fun project to try. But of course, if you are going to try playing with fire in your photography, make sure you do it safely with a fire extinguisher on hand. And to be clear, you do so entirely at your own risk. Okay? Okay, moving on. Go to the shop, find some interesting looking fruit, bring it home, take some photos. Easy. Strawberries and raspberries are great because they've got these interesting textures on the outside that make them look great in photos. You could experiment with taking photos in natural light or by using your own lighting. Then once you've got a few shots in the bag, slice them up and see if you can get even more interesting shots looking at the inside. Citrus fruits look great sliced up, particularly if you are backlighting them so that light shines through. But other fruits like kiwis or pomegranates look amazing on the inside as well. So next time you're out shopping and browsing the fruit and veg aisle, see if you can find any photography inspiration. And for that extra element of excitement, try adding some water splashes to your fruit shots. To take this image, I put a blueberry on an upright pin, got my camera close up, had a flash off to the side, and then simply dropped water on it. Some droplets hit the berry perfectly, causing these extra splashes, while others simply caught the light nicely as they cascaded down. Then in Photoshop, I blended some of the best looking splashes together to create this dynamic looking final shot. Last but not least, get out the jewelry. Jewelry items can be great to photograph, particularly if they've got stones in there to catch the light. And they don't need to be fabulously expensive diamonds, even costume jewelry can look great under the lens. I did a macro shoot of a cool ring that I bought a while ago, and I wanted to mimic the rough hand hue nature of the outside of the ring by pairing it with this cool looking piece of slate. It was a great project, not just to kind of understand how to take these photos and how to use for lighting, but also how to think about building a set that actually helps the product stand out. So those are some of my favorite projects to try at home. I've honestly enjoyed doing every single one of them and I have every intention of returning to them because they're so fun to do, I love the results and I always end up learning more each time I try them. Do you have any others that I should try? If so, then do please make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you try any of the projects that you've seen here today, do please make sure to share the results with me on Instagram using at batteryhq. I would love to see what you get. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please do hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.